So, starting chapter one, uh, he begins the chapter with these axioms. We don't need to really pay attention to that right now. These are all the axioms that'll get used throughout the book, but this is just here for reference, and we'll talk about each one in greater detail later. So, in the next section, he starts talking about uh, the motivations for developing set theory axiomatically. And historically, the main motivation was Russell's paradox. Now, I think there's an easier paradox that's related to it called the liar paradox, so I'll go ahead and discuss this one. Um, here, the sentence S is the sentence, this sentence is false, so it t says of itself that it is false. And the question is, is S true? So, suppose that S is true, what does that imply? Well, since it says that it's false, and it's true in saying that, that must mean that it's false. And that's a contradiction, so uh, I'll use the lightning bolt symbol to denote a contradiction. I swear I've seen that somewhere before. So, um, well, this must mean that S is false, right? If being true implies a contradiction, then S must be false. But let's scrutinize that a little bit. Well, if S is false, and S just says that it's false, then it must be right about that. So that means S is true. And again, we have a contradiction. So how does the liar paradox get resolved? Well, you know, philosophers have spilled a ton of ink trying to resolve the paradox, and as is usually the case, I don't think philosophers have come to anything like a consensus view about how it gets solved. So, uh, but set theory has a related paradox, obviously Russell's paradox, and one very important way of resolving that paradox is exactly the subject of this textbook. Um, now, Russell himself gave a cute version of the paradox, so I'll go ahead and discuss the cute version. Uh, it's called the Barber Paradox, and in this version, you imagine a town in which the barber shaves everyone who does not shave himself. Well, the question is, who shaves the barber? Now... As usual, we entertain two possibilities. Suppose that the barber shaves himself. Well, in that case, that means since the barber shaves himself, he's one of those people who uh, uh, the barber does not shave, right? If the barber shaves everyone who does not shave himself, and let's, you know go ahead and insert the implied, you know, uh, the barber shaves all and only the people who shave themselves, then uh, the fact that if, if the barber is shaving himself, that means he's one of the people the barber doesn't shave, right? Because everyone who does not, uh, or who does shave himself, the barber doesn't shave those people. So, uh, so then we get that the barber does not. And, uh, you know, again, that's a contradiction. And, of course, if you run the second scenario where the barber is not the one who shaves himself, well, then that means that the barber is in the set of people whom the barber shaves, and you get the contradiction again. So, in the next video, I'll go ahead and present uh, Russell's Paradox.